Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at London Paddington today. This is a station you normally associate with travelling west, but today we're going to be travelling east. It's the 24th of May 2022 and it's the day the Elizabeth line opens. So what we're going to do, we're going to go, we're going to ride the line, we're going to get off at each station, have a look around and see what we can see. So this is platform one. Funny enough, it's a C XC2C train or an on hire C2C train to Great Western Railway here at the moment. So most trains obviously travel west, although travelling east from Paddington isn't actually anything new because the Hammersmith and City Line, going right back to broad gauge days, ran trains from Hammersmith right through Paddington over the other side of the station through to Farringdon. Funny enough, where we're going. So it's like history effectively repeats itself because this many years later, we're going to catch a train on this side of the station. And we're going to travel east, we will travel through Farringdon, but we'll travel on right through to Abbey Wood and we'll get out at each station. The exception being Bond Street, because that's not open, so we'll perhaps come back and visit Bond Street when it does open. So we're going to leave the Great Western Mainline platforms behind us, we go through here, and uh, here we have the entrance to the Elizabeth Line. So there's a few entrances, it's, it's so big, you can see there's like an air shaft up over there, I think if we look down here, so you can see the escalators going down, the ticket barriers are just down there, as you can see them, obviously we'll be down there in a moment, and then here's the lift shafts. So what we're going to do, we're going to go down those escalators and ride the Elizabeth line. So here we are, we are now travelling down, this is really exciting, the first time I've been down here to ride the Elizabeth line, so we were up there a moment ago. So that's the, those escalators go up and these ones go down only. And then of course, we've got lift shaft in the middle. There's a row of ticket machines. So you've got a gate line here, a gate line there. What I think I'll do, I'll go through that gate line and go as far the west as I can to come east, if that makes sense. Got my travel card today. Uh, I'm a bit old fashioned, still use uh, paper travel cards on the whole. Um, because for what I'm doing today, being in and out of stations, it'll probably be the best thing. So a moment ago, we were right up there, so we've already come down a fair distance now. As for the Elizabeth Line opening today, it is only the typical my ticket doesn't open. Excuse me, my ticket didn't open the barriers. Um, so while I wait for them to let me through the ticket barriers, um, let's go through. Thank you. So yeah, typical isn't it, the paper ticket doesn't work when you're trying to make a video. Anyway, we're going to continue down even further. This must be where the platforms are. So, so what's happened is the central core section opens today. So eventually you'll be able to travel, you will be able to travel westwards from here to Heathrow Airport and to Reading. But at the moment it's just, a, effectively it's like a, a separate line from Reading, uh, not Reading, um, it will be from Reading. Oh, there's a train coming in there. From Paddington to Abbey Wood. But eventually you will be able to go right away through from Shenfield to Reading and Abbey Wood to Heathrow Airport. So there's a train there, that's the one that's just come in. So I believe they run on automatic. So what will happen is that train will take itself out into the sidings and then it will return on this one. So as you see here, it says Abbey Wood approaching. So it's not stopping at Bond Street, which we knew about. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go right down to the very end and uh, we shall board this train. So this is gonna be really exciting. We've waited years and years for this to happen. So here we are down at London Paddington on the Elizabeth Line, and we're going east. So we're on the train, we haven't left Paddington yet. The next stop is going to be Tottenham Court Road. Now, as I've already said, we will not be stopping at Bond Street. So what I'm going to attempt to do is video as we pass through Bond Street. So I'll put that clip in so we can see what it looks like. As I said, we'll be going back there. Look, there's one of the maps from when this train operates on the section from Paddington to Heathrow Airport and Reading. So eventually, if you have a look now, you can see on the map here, so you've got Paddington out to Heathrow, I oh know it's not showing very well, Paddington out to Heathrow and Reading. We're riding this section, from Paddington to Abbey Wood. So you currently have to change at Liverpool Street to go to Shenfield. And if you'd come in from Reading or Heathrow, you'd change a bit like I did, you've got on this one. So it sounds like we're about to go, so this is exciting. New track for me on a brand new railway line. Doors are closing. So 
so uh, there we go. There's another drain just pulled in over there, so there'll be a few excited people getting off on that side. So we're leaving Paddington now. I'll let you see the view out the window, although it's underground, which would be quite this an interesting underground line. Canary Wood via Canary Wharf. Next station, Tottenham Court Road. Change for Central and Northern. So we are now into the tunnels proper and um, so the few things I wanted to explain is it's known as the Elizabeth line effectively though it's not like the tube the deep level tube lines you know that we're used to like the central line the Piccadilly line the Victoria line this is a full-size train that runs out on the main line and it just dives under London and comes up on the other side so it's although it's called the Elizabeth line and it's run by TfL it's actually part of network rail so in theory whether that will happen you could run an electric loco right through here. Um, wouldn't be surprised if it does happen one day on some special occasion, but I don't think it's going to happen just yet. I'm just, um, I know we're going to soon, you can see my reflection, we're going to soon be passing through Bond Street. I know at the moment you can just see the reflection because we're down the tunnel, so I really want to see what there is to see of Bond Street as we pass through. And then obviously we'll get out Tottenham Court Road. So my plan is to get out each station. We'll go out, most stations are going to have more than one exit, so I'll go out one exit and come back in the other and then ride to the next station and probably at the end I'll just ride all the way back to Paddington just so I can say I've done the whole line. Uh, yeah, very exciting. Already one thing I've noticed is you feel the distance, it feels a long, longer distance. Like if this was a tube train, by now we'd have arrived at the next station. So, you know, the stations are further apart. Then it's not like a tube station where sometimes in the centre of London they're only like a couple of hundred yards apart. Um, but here we're sort of talking, well, at least a mile, maybe more between each station. Once, once it gets further out to Abbey Wood, the stations will get further apart. I'm quite excited about doing the bit to Abbey Wood because a section of it is on the old line to North Woolwich, which I rode, rode down on the class 313 before that line closed. So we're just slowing down now. I think this is probably going to be part of Bond Street, although. When you go on an underground train and the station's closed, then usually the train has to slow right down to five miles an hour just in case there's someone on the platform. But on this occasion, it's got the PEDs. PEDs are the platform edge doors. The Jubilee line has them. Oh, there are those. So I just saw a light there. So, yeah, here we are. This must be Bond, there is Bond Street. So that was our preview of Bond Street. I don't know if you noticed, it was quite amusing that the roundels, instead of saying Bond Street, it said every other one, one said station closed, and the other said opening soon. So maybe one day those roundels will probably end up in London Transport Museum's Acton Depot because they will they are literally part of history. It's and it's exciting because I'm here on you know on a day history is made, the day the Elizabeth line finally becomes public. So I'm just gonna continue now. Soon we shall be at Tottenham Court Road. So here we are, we've arrived at Tottenham Court Road and it is massive compared to like, you know, your usual tube station. They'll be about half this length. It's, yeah, it really is pretty huge. Now, there's more than one exit here, so that way goes to Tottenham Court Road, Northern Line, Central Line. So that's the way the exit I'll come out of is what I've probably been out of many times before. But there's a new exit that way to Dean Street. So I thought, what we'll do, we'll head that way, we'll have a look. Let's just have a look at a few things here. So. Obviously, the one difference, well, we're used to these on the Jubilee line, these PEDs, platform edge doors, but not on any other line. On the tube lines, you tend to get that about here, a dot matrix indicator telling you, you know, where the train's going, how long it is. Well, on Next the Elizabeth line, line, they're here. And, and of course, you've got the announcements. Two, Abbey Woods, this train will go that Farrington, Newport Street, Whitechapel, Canary Wharf, Custom House, Woolwich, and then Abbey Woods. We'll be visiting all those stations. So it's quite exciting, you can see how the map moves and everything. Oh, look, there's my reflection, I can wave at myself. So you can see everything, it says enjoy your journey today, which, um, yeah, we certainly shall. So let's, let's go and explore the station. It's, it's really weird seeing myself walking along. So if I look that way, it's like, it, it just feels strange. I'm not used, used to that, because I don't think I've ever made a video on the Jubilee line before, because I do remember when the Jubilee line opened, but I was a little bit young to make videos. So anyway, uh, let's, uh, let's get out. So that's the the way up the escalator there. It looks as the platforms A and B, not platforms one or two. So that's eastbound, this is westbound. Now the westbound platform isn't quite 
next to it, like you get if it was a tube line. So we will go up there and go out, but I just want to go and see how far away the, the westbound platform is, platform B. So we're going to head into this tunnel, which is quite exciting. It's, yeah, it's like um, the connecting tunnels you get on tube stations aren't usually this big. This is massive. I mean, there are other uh, tube stations where you do get, you know, um, the lines not quite next to each other, but really it's not on this scale. That's, that's the whole thing. This is what we're going to see a lot of today. This whole line, it's a bit like a tube line, but it's on a much, much bigger scale. Interestingly, the platform here is dead straight, unlike the platform, you know, on the other side, which was curved. So it's just dead straight. So what we're going to do now, we'll go and make our way out the station. We'll go to Dean Street, and um, what we'll do when we get to Dean Street, I'll walk along at street level, and then I'll, I'll point out the existing entrance. So I think we'll go into the existing entrance, or a newish entrance that's already opened, as if we're going on to London Underground, but then we'll find our way through back down to here. So I'm going to go up here now. How long this escalator is going to be? Well, it's quite long, quite a long escalator. So I shall see you at the top. There we go. We have come to the top. So this is the ticket barriers, the gate line for the Dean Street entrance. So lifts there. So quite a big station building. You know, bigger than your typical tube stations. Now, so my travel card lets me out ticket barriers here. That's better. So, this is Dean Street, so that's my first journey on the Elizabeth Line completed. Come out here, Tottenham Court Road Station, Dean Street, and you can see their building above it. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to walk at street level to the other entrance to Tottenham Court Road. Here we are again at Tottenham Court Road, in that central area here, which is what people think of when they think of Tottenham Court Road. Of course there is Centre Point, one of London's brutalist and listed building. So you've got this entrance here, and then you've got an entrance there, an entrance there, besides this. So these entrances we've been using now for the last 10 years. Now I remember, yeah, well, 10 years ago, or over the last 10 years, it just always seems that there's been stuff going on. They've been rebuilding constantly this station. It used to be a really small, you know, station. It was just an interchange with the Northern Line and the Central Line. Now, of course, it's had a huge change having the Elizabeth line joined. So I've been down this escalator before. What I won't have done is been down to the Elizabeth line before. Well, actually I have. I've been down to the other end of the platform 10 minutes ago, but you know what I mean. So we come to here. That's interesting. Look, there's like a, a single gate line there just for the lift into the, into the Elizabeth line. Because occasionally some stations like Stevenage's one, the lift, if you use lift, you actually bypass ticket barriers. But um, they not really know that trick now. So that is the ticket barriers for the central line. So we're not going down there today. Then it looks like up here you've got one long gate line. Down there goes to the northern line. This is those two entrances I just pointed out, the ones below centre point. So obviously we're not, we're going to go down to the Elizabeth line. So as we go through here, let's go through these set of ticket barriers now. Whether my ticket will open. So it came out the other one, so it might not. Oh good, it did. So we're going down there. That's the Northern Line entrance. Yeah, quite a long gate line. I don't know where the longest gate line is on the um, Elizabeth Line. I know the longest gate line in London is Waterloo Station, the mainline station. So we're going to go down here now. Is it going to be another really long escalator? It looks like it is. We're going all the way down to the platforms. See you at the bottom. Almost at the bottom now, there's further interchange down here with the Northern Line. If you go that way, it goes down to the Northern Line and to the Elizabeth Line this way. So that's the way we're going. One thing I'm not worked out yet is, can we get to the Central Line without going up, up to the top and out one gate line into another? Um, I expect you can. I'm not going to explore every corridor. So where are we now? We're, I think it's busier down this end. So I came out the quieter end earlier. Um, coming into the busier and it's quite funny if you see how everyone's stopping to take pictures and um, you don't normally see that with people taking pictures on tube stations or railway stations of every sign and that they see but everyone's excited like I am because it is the first day so that's the end of the westbound platform yeah, it does say central line that way although actually I reckon if you went via the northern line platforms you probably could get to the central line but um, I'm not going to do it today I'm going to walk down this tunnel and get another train go to the next stop and we'll 
look around there. There's a train to Abbey Wood in three minutes. One thing you can't do so easily here is film trains arriving and departing with a pet, but you know, there's plenty of other places you can film these trains, so I'm not going to complain about that. Here we are, we're right down this end of the station, so earlier on, we're right down there. Let's wait for a train to come. So we've now arrived at Farringdon. Again, two different exits, one way for Farringdon itself, the other way for the Barbican. So as soon as I'm now down the eastbound exit, I think this is going to be a bit of a pattern today. I'll do one station out the eastbound exit and come in the westbound and vice versa. So it says Barbican that way, Farringdon the other. What we're going to do though, we'll go here and I want to show you on this, um, this map here to give you an idea just how far the exits are apart. Because you know, if you go out one exit, it can be quite a long way to the other end. So we're there, Barbican. we're going to go out that exit. Found an exit's down there. We can actually go out this exit, walk to the tube station at Barbican, get on the Metropolitan Line or Hammersmith and City or Circle Line train, travel by train to Farringdon, and then get back in the other end of this station. So that gives you an idea. You can actually get a train technically from one end of the station to the other. So we, we're talking big. We're, you know, it, it's, it's massive. Um, you know, I'm just sort of gradually getting used to the scale of this whole system. I knew it was going to be bigger than the tube, I was expecting that, but now you're actually down here, you realise just how big it is. You know, I've seen it on the telly, watched documentaries of it being constructed over all these years, but to finally be here is really quite exciting. So we'll just have another quick look at the, um, yeah, the westbound platform. So again, yeah, this is platform B, so it seems they're all platforms A and B. So we're going to soon end up down there, but as I said, we're going to go at street level and for fun we might as well use the tube, seeing as it's there, I've got an all day ticket, I might as well use it. So we follow down here, we've got two escalators and the lift. The whole system is of course fully accessible for everyone, which the tube wasn't because in those days they weren't, didn't quite think along the same wavelengths as we do, so it's great to know that everyone can use it, but what we're going to do, we're not going on the escalator, because there, this looks to me like it's a travel letter. It's a funicular railway. Have a look at that. You can just see it's at the top there. So we're going to go on the travel letter to get to the top. So we're getting a railway within a railway, if you like. A funicular lift. So it is, yeah, just like at Greenford. So we're now going into the funicular lift, so this will take us up to the top. It's going to be hard to show you the driver's eye view, as it effectively is, because it's dark. In a minute I'll put the camera against the glass, but what we're going to do, we're going to ride up here, so there's a, a counterbalance, because usually with funicular you have two vehicles, one goes up, brings the other down. On this occasion we go up and the counterweight, which is a big yellow phone, which you might be able to see, goes down. So what will happen? is when we get to the top, we've effectively done what the escalator would have done, it's just that instead of having a straight lift, we've got an incline lift. The other place you can see one of these on the network is at Greenford. If you have a look at link on screen now, have a look at my video where I explored the Greenford branch, oh, we just missed it, but that was the yellow counterweight going the other way. Have a look at the video where I explored the Greenford branch, you'll be able to see there is an inclinator there, but that one's actually above ground, it takes from ground level up to viaduct, viaduct level. So that's quite exciting. There's also one down by the Manelian Bridge, but I've never ever seen that one working. So here we are, we are now about to come out. So we've ridden our first inclinator of the day. So here you've effectively got three modes of transport. You've got the Elizabeth line, crossrail, you've got this, 
and of course you've got the tube which we're going to get on soon. So the doors are opening, coming out here. There's another one. So that's that's the um, escalator. There's another one. So we're actually getting two two for the price of one here. So we jump in here into the second inclinator. And this one's also quite long, so we're going to travel on up to the top. I'll let you see the view. Or the yellow counterweight for Nicholas. So it's like a little railway underneath this one, which you'll never get to ride, but it powers this one. There's also steps, um, you might just be able to see, wait, pretty see my reflection for the maintenance people to get to them to maintain them. So we get to here, we should now come out and we should be, yeah, we're at street level. So it's called the Smithfield Gate Hall or Ticket Hall. Perhaps it's not called a ticket hall because you can't actually buy tickets, you just exit the stations and doors are opening. So that's really exciting. Normally I don't use lifts because I don't really need to and um, there's other people who need them more than I do. But here I probably will be tempted to always use them. Unless of course there's a big queue and there really are people who need them more than me. So you've got a gate line there. That, that gate line looks like it's in only. This gate line looks like it's out only. So obviously we'll go out this gate line. We'll go and find Farringdon Station and that's where we should travel back. Another interesting thing I've noticed here which station is it? West Ealing's got them. If you look at on the top of the ticket barrier, the ticket comes out at this angle. That's for them to be used in all weathers. Most gate lines, ticket comes up like that. So that's a slight modification because as you can see, it's fairly open. So if the wind and rain comes in, it shouldn't affect this gate line. Right, let's go and find a tube. I've just come for a shortish walk along Long Lane. That building there, that is above the new Elizabeth Line entrance. Just beside it, you can see Smithfield Market now if I run across the road here if you have a look here that's the prep see that wall there yeah. that's the uh, Metropolitan Line station for Barton so the idea is I can get on the train here travel one stop back to Farringdon and enter the system there and then of course there's the iconic Barton housing estate so where I'm standing here as I said I can just about make out the round of the Elizabeth Line uh, up there and Farringdon station is here so it's a short well it's a you know three or four minute walk to here to Barbican station sorry I said Farringdon didn't I to Barbican so it'd be at least a 10 minute walk to Farringdon so let's go and uh, travel back to Farringdon so we are back at Farringdon and Elizabeth line station but we're currently on the Metropolitan line Hammersmith city and circle platform that way is looking east you can just see over there where the line to Moorgate used to go. That was the Thameslink line to Moorgate. Here comes a train. It's funny now being back on a tube station, just how sort of small it feels. And, you know, I guess it's a subsurface station, but it's still, you can see it wasn't quite built for today's needs. And as an S-stop train comes in, they always feel big compared to the tube trains. But they're about, you know, they're obviously similar loading gauge, maybe slightly smaller to the Elizabeth line trains, but they now seem small. What we're going to do, we're going to go down here towards the Thameslink platforms because this is where I believe we can enter the Elizabeth line. So this is the Thameslink platforms. Now these only used to be wide enough, or long enough rather, to take eight carriages. It unfortunately meant they had to close the Moorgate line to extend the platforms down here to take another four carriages because the junction used to be... Yeah, funny, we seem to be doing a bit of a disused railway video at the moment. That wasn't actually the plan, but anyway, the junction used to be here. So, right trains would have gone off along there. You can still see at Barbican the tracks where they would have been long since um, out of use, but the tracks are still there. Right, now how do we get to the Elizabeth lines? There's already two entrances here. I think we're gonna have to go over, because you've got a road in the middle. So you've got the original entrance there, and they built a new entrance here. Did it say, it says Elizabeth line over there. It tends to point us this way, so we'll go this way, and um, we'll find the Elizabeth line. I'm not gonna hang around and see a Thames link train go through. What I can show you as soon as we are up this end is, like I said, it wasn't actually meant to be this huge railway video, but it kind of is. Just over there, where you can see a Hampton City Line train, the line to Morgan would have run off along there. Um, but let's go and find Elizabeth Line. Bad I'm indoors, because it's, the moment I 
where it entered Barbican Station, it started raining. So, um, nice to be indoors, really. So this is pretty big, all of this, but this, this isn't, again, this isn't new. But we go up to, well, it's new which but it's not new. What I can show you is the two entrances without actually needing to exit the station here. So you've got this big new concourse, a gate line, got a road through the middle, and, um, and we get an even better view of that former railway. Why do I keep going to former railways? I don't know. Where well, you see that metropolitan line train. There's the tunnels. The other tunnels were just there, but the lift shaft masks the view. So, this entrance opened a few years ago. Across the road, you can see the original entrance to Farringdon Station. We're going down here. Oh, these concrete lines, the sort of roof of the station, they're pretty cool. We're going down quite a short escalator this time. Most of the ones we've done today have been really long. I don't think there's any inclinators here. That was really fun, those inclinators at the other end of the station. Maybe there will be, I don't know. But we shall find out very shortly. I don't think there is here. I think here there'll probably just be a lift straight down, straight down from street to platform level. No, we've got to go around. That's the up ones, we're going around here to the down ones. So we go right around here and we shall go down the escalators. How long is this one going to be? Is this going to be another long one? It's the longest one, have a look at that. I shall see you down the bottom. So we're now back down at the bottom of the escalators. So we're going to continue heading east. We're going to go to the next station now and explore a bit more. So. Here we are in the central concourse. As I keep saying, so much bigger than on a tube line. This is probably about the size. If you were to go to somewhere like Clapham Common, that's probably about this big. Clapham Common's got a platform in the middle and tracks each side. Clapham Common Station is probably about that big. I think a train's just gone, so I've now got a four minute wait for my next train towards Abbey Woods. I'm now back down at the western end of the platform. So, wait for my train now. Standing right down the end of the Elizabeth Line train, see the number, so they're class 345s and we're on unit number 35. The reason they've got a lower number is because Crossrail, the idea of Crossrail, as it was then, has been around for years. In the 90s they were talking about building it, and the plan always was for the trains that were Crossrail to be the class 345s. Probably if the idea had come a bit later, there'd probably be something like a class 735 or something like that, but um, that's why they're class 345. So we're just coming into Liverpool Street now, so another station to explore. All very exciting. Of course, I've been to. Hello! Ladies waving hello. I'm so happy I'm here. So am I. Goodbye. You, you two. See, everyone's enjoying it. It's really nice. So here we are, we're at Liverpool Street. Let's find our way out. So it says. Okay, Northern Line that way and that way, but we've got various other um, different ways out. And then also it says Elizabeth Line trains towards Shenfield from platforms 15 to 17. So we won't go up there today, but there is obviously, you know, that will be something in the future. So one day we can get on the train here and go to Shenfield, a bit like I was saying at Paddington, we'll be able to get on the train and go the other way at Paddington over towards um, Heathrow and eventually Reading. One day, when it opens, I'm going to have to do Reading to Shenfield. It'll be a long journey. Uh, better not drink too much water because there's no toilets on these trains. So, um, yeah, beware, but it, it's, it's not a problem for journeys like this, but that is something to bear in mind when the full length opens. If you're going to do the whole journey from one end to another, there are no toilets. So, um, I can't see it being a huge problem, but so you know. Anyway, we've come down this very boxy corridor here and I'm not really sure where we are. We're going to the Northern Line. So there's a lift, it's got the steps and no escalators here. This really very much seems to be the, the back entrance, the entrance that you're probably not going to use. But we are using it right now. So we'll continue to find our way up here. So that lift just takes you to there. So that's a short lift, short set of stairs. Watch around this corner. Very much like, yeah, what is around this corner? Um, we'll just keep walking down here. We're just coming to the end of this very long corridor, which is taking us towards the Northern Line. It seems to just go on forever and ever. Um, and like I said, it very much is the back end of the station where not so many people go. So we get to the end here, it says lift one side, Northern Line the other. 
So we'll go up. I'm not going to ride the northern line. Could go down to Bank, I suppose, and do the um, new bit of track at Bank, because what they've done, they've um, realigned some track and made the old platform into part of the concourse. But I'm not going to do that today. I'll, I'll probably go and ride that at some point when I'm in London. So I'm just going up up these stairs now. So I'm not sure if it's take me to the northern line platforms. If it does, I'll then probably make my own way up um, up to street level and we'll go in the main entrance as if um, you know we'd arrived at Liverpool Street. Oh, I recognise this bit. I know where we are. Um, I've been down these. I remember these little escalators. Yeah, I remember them. As soon as we're here, look how small that is compared to what we see on the Elizabeth Line. And here we have a traditional tube line. It feels, it's like a miniature railway almost, or a narrow gauge railway. You should go on the Glasgow subway there, because that is an narrow gauge. That really would feel like a miniature railway. Then that's the South Man platform towards Bank. So, tell you what, as soon as I'm here, and there's a train to more than in one minute, it's not part of the Elizabeth line, let's go and have a look at Newbit Track at Bank. Bank. By the way, when I um, I was slightly confused then, I, of course I realised the whole time I was walking, oh, well, by the way this is the new uh, platform at Bank, the whole time I was walking along there I was thinking, I didn't think the Northern Line went to Liverpool Street and of course it doesn't. We were in Moorgate Station, so technically you could walk into the ticket barriers of Moorgate and walk out the ticket barriers of Liverpool Street without actually travelling on the train. So this is the other brand new bit. When I said about the Northern Line feeling like a narrow gauge line, well here, it feels a bit more Elizabeth line, it's kind of being more Elizabeth line, it's big and everything. So this, this is brand new, what we're standing on, this is new track, so I have just ridden on this bit of track for the first time, so as well as doing Crossrail, the Elizabeth line, I can tick off this new bit of track, although to tick it off properly, I'm going to have to continue down in that direction, that might be for another day, I just thought soon as we're here, we would do this. Now what I'm hoping to do before I travel one stop back to Moorgate to walk to Liverpool Street um, is show you where the old platform used to be. So this is the very, very large new bank station that feels more Elizabeth line. So as we go out here, so basically, yeah, this is new and what they did, now where was it? It's, where it was here. Basically, they filled in a section of track and made it into a concourse and then they opened up some new new uh, lines I oh, know yeah that's new this tunnel's new I think here yeah this is it I'm standing now on the disused railway another old railways found its way into this video and this this would have been the platform that line there is like the edge of the old platform so I'm um, yeah looking that way that's old railway you can just see some escalators over there and if we go through here here is the other platform. So this kind of gives a sense of scale of the whole operation. This, look how small this is. And then you even have the same, not so big here. But now, now they've taken up the track and pushed it over that way. It's all quite big, except for this poor little platform here. Still feels small and tube-like, which is just what it is. I'm gonna get a train the other way now and we'll go back to Liverpool Street or Moorgate first and continue to explore the Elizabeth line. Here we are, we're back at Moorgate, and yes, it's not featured on the Elizabeth line, although, as we found, you can act from Liverpool Street, you can walk straight into the Northern line platforms at Moorgate, and then I went to Bank, I came back here. What I thought I'd do, I thought I'd end today's video here, I'm gonna go and have lunch, and then, of course, I'm not gonna go home without bashing the rest of the um, Elizabeth line to Abbey Wood. That'll come in the next video. So while we're down here, just a couple of things I'd like to show you. That's, of course, Metro Boston line, Hammersmith and City and Circle. This is the end of the old Moorgate branch, which we saw back at Farringdon. Track still here, and there's the end of the line. There were wires up. I do remember seeing class 319s in here, and then these platforms, these belong, these are the terminal platforms. Some trains do terminate here, 
and they're the through platforms to Liverpool Street. So what I've got to do now is I've got to go over there, get on one of those trains, travel to Liverpool Street, and then we will continue. So we've done all the Zone 1 stations in this video. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. And of course, very soon, probably by the time you watch this, part two will be out where we travel even further east. So from Moorgate Station, thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to like, subscribe and comment. Goodbye.